by the way, this is Todd's rodeo uh, in general. Todd is local to here. He's been doing a church service for the last. I didn't get last year, but the two years before. Yeah, so he's been doing church services here. Um, but we're we've been connected through a ministry called uh, Love Thy Nerd for a while, and we've been friends for a minute. And uh, wanted to just share a little bit with you. Now, I I I failed you because I pl- thought there was going to be a screen up here so you could see all the notes and everything. So there's not. Um, but what I've done is this. If you want to follow along with notes, with scripture and stuff, I've prepared uh, on our Facebook page. All the notes are up there in picture format. Or if you go to faithandfandom.org, all the notes are up there as a PDF. So if you want to follow along or you want to be able to look back later, uh, that's going to be something that we have here. And um, But today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about Avatar The Last Airbender. And But more importantly, we're going to be talking about what it looks like um, for us to live out our live out faith in a proper way and uh on a pseudo legal disclaimer um just to say this because i always say this whenever i'm doing church services at cons um i'm going to share with you what i believe and what i believe to be true these are my personal convictions faith in this capacity i'm not telling you you have to believe what i believe i'm not telling you that you are required to do that or that you can't disagree with me you can totally disagree with me i'm still going to love you um so <laughs> Um, and that being said, you're welcome to disagree with me in those capacities. Just know uh, anything we're sharing, we're not sharing in any malicious intent or to be critical of you. But we are. I'm sharing what I believe to be the truth of the Word of God and the Bible in that capacity. So if you want to follow along, you're welcome to do that. It's uh, faithandfandom.org or Faith and Fandom on Facebook. You can find it and all the notes are up there. But uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, imitations and adaptations. Um, and what that looks like. So just to ask this for the sake of discussion, how many of you have seen any version of Avatar The Last Airbender? Fantastic, that's the majority of the room. And if you haven't, it's okay. We're not, you're not gonna be totally reliant or dependent on that. Um, So Avatar The Last Airbender originally premiered in 2005 on Nickelodeon. I did not see it then. Um, I lived in the woods and at that point I was a newlywed and Watching Nickelodeon was not on my radar at that point in time, and um, I, but I was I was running a kids' summer camp, and we literally were 240 acres deep in the woods. This was at that point in time I was on dial-up internet, and and I had no TV that I was paying for, so I missed all of Avatar in its original run. I didn't. I moved to a city in 2010 and got high-speed internet for the first time in my life and but at that point in time still didn't pay attention to avatar when it was on netflix Um, my family first watched avatar as a collective um, during the pandemic because we were all stuck together we watched all of avatar and we watched all of clone wars and we watched all of rebels all in like a three-month block of time um and huh three days yeah three days yeah we (laughs) All 150 hours of Clone Wars. Um, and if you're not familiar with the connection, Dave Filoni, who makes The Mandalorian and who's over a lot of Star Wars now and uh, did Clone Wars, all started on Avatar. Um, so uh, you'll find a lot of similarities between Avatar and Clone Wars in those capacities to the point that there's a, hel- a stormtrooper. No, there, there's a clone trooper in Clone Wars that has Aang's symbol on his helmet. Um, as a little Easter egg with that. So they kind of tied together. But Avatar The Last Airbender premiered. It was very popular. It got a lot of love. It got a lot of uh, good reactions in that capacity. Um, So much so that by the time the show ended in 2008, they were already in production on a major motion picture version of it um, from M. Night Shyamalan, uh, who was the... Yeah, we shall not speak. Um, we, it, there was already in production, and the, and the guy had had, at that point, kind of a, a, a good streak of movies between, you know, The Sixth Sense and things like that. He was doing pretty well, and this was going to be his big foray into not scary movies. Um, so here's to ask you this. What makes a successful adaptation? Not just on Avatar, but in a story in life in general, what makes a successful adaptation? Okay. Say that one more time. Actually, saying your main character's name right. Saying the main character's name right. Yes, that does help. Okay. Accuracy. Okay. Um, how much leeway is there in accuracy for you? Like, not much. It needs to be 
accurate <laughs> verbatim. 85%? 5% accuracy, you, you can say, like, you don't have to get everything right, because it's a movie, you can get everything correct. Yeah. All right, let me ask you, oh, go ahead. I'm more of tone. Yeah, tone, like, so if, if 85, I'd go down to 65, because I think it would be more tone than actual lines of dialogue. Or, like, the same message. Really? Yeah. Same message? Okay. Because I, I, I forgive the Hobbit a lot of sins. Yeah. <laughs> because I think there's there is some of that message still intact. Right. Okay. I feel like as long as you get the main points right, you're good. As long as you get the main points. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, so I just watched Dune 2 last night. Yeah. This is a good way to say that. But I think the characteristics of the characters because you can't put everything in it. You just can't. Or everything would be seven million hours long. But if the character is true to who the person, the character is and whatever you're adapting, then I think the dialogue is you know, secondary. Um, as long as you leave there feeling, oh yeah, that was the, it felt like the right person. Okay. So to ask, just to ask you this for conversation's sake, what do you feel like is the best adaptation you've seen? Either from a show to a movie or a book to a movie, game to a movie, what's the best adaptation in your opinion? Okay, respect the old Mortal Kombat. That's you know. Hunger Games. My my only beef with Hunger Games is that you don't get Katniss's internal dialogue, and I feel like that's the best parts of the book. But yeah. Oh, the next season? Yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of hope in that. Well, and one of the things in what you were talking about accuracy, Henry Cavill demanded that they stick with the books, and when they weren't sticking with the books, he said bye. Um, and there comes a lot to that. And so with Avatar The Last Airbender, when it was coming up as a movie, um, the movie dropped. And uh, if in the notes, I've got a nice little picture of the, the movie cast. And literally for me, the moment the movie started, because my kids watched it, we started to watch it as soon as we finished the animated series. Like, we finished it, and we were like, all right, let's go ahead and put that on. And when I saw the kids playing soccer and... Katara, I'm like, nah, this isn't gonna go well. And then I think I don't. I think Aang had barely made it out of the ice, and I'm like, I'm good. Ong, yeah, sorry, Ong. Um, but does anybody in here passionately love the movie of Avatar? Okay, cool. Um, Uh, and that's the reality of it is the from everything I understood, it was considered one of the worst adaptations uh, across the board. And then when I saw them like earth bending and stuff, I was like, oh no. It makes Dragon Ball Evolution It does. Now, I only watched that once, and I hadn't even finished Z yet. So I, I am curious to go back and watch Dragon Ball Evolution. Um, and by the way, if you're going to meet James Marsters while you're here, um, go ask him how he feels about it. Um, think was worse, Avatar movie or the remake of Dukes of Hazard movie? Avatar. <laughs> uh, and you know, that's and that's the thing. I, I remember watching the Dukes of Hazard movie and you know, my soul wasn't hurt by that. Like more than the fact that I was just watching it. It was the um Avatar hurt my feelings. Um but so when it came to uh the Avatar adaptation people didn't like the tone of it they didn't like the accuracy of it a lot of stuff was toned down it was visually unappealing to the point people rejected it as an adaptation so on the flip side what makes an unsuccessful adaptation like uh, the, you know you can miss the mark but what just makes something wrong as an adaptation diverging from original story okay I feel like betraying characters and who they are in their integrity um, does a lot for me. Um, there's there's a lot in, like, we were talking about this at your house the other day. There's a lot that went on in Wonder Woman 84 that I felt was, like, that hurt my soul. Um, uh, but when it comes to, I think there's a lot of stuff that's easy to make a bad adaptation. And so sometimes it's not even just about adapting. Sometimes you try to continue stories. How many of you are fans of Legend of Korra? 
mixed. Okay, if you're unfamiliar, the Avatar movie came out in 2010. So two years after the Avatar movie, we were graced with a sequel series to Avatar called The Legend of Korra, which follows the Avatar that takes place after Aang. <laughs> and somebody said at my booth the other day, nobody is mid-ground on Korra. They're either love it or hate it. Um, not, and I said I'm mid, mid-ground on it. Um, I feel, yeah, and here's the... I feel like it doesn't stick the landing, but I feel like there's redeemable stuff through most of it. Um, you get more Iroh. You get some more things that are good in it. You get Grandpa Zuko. I mean, there's, there's good stuff. You get some backstory on the characters, which I think is good. Um, but even one of the things that made Korra a struggling series is that it put the same idea in a new concept and then a new time frame and a new period, and so people didn't necessarily want that. They wanted more of what they originally had. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but the reality is this. If you're a believer, we're more so on the legend of Korra of things than on the avatar of things because we're not living in the same time period, the same settings of what we take inspiration and truth from in Scripture. We're living in something that follows up, and so it's going to be hard to take everything we see in scripture as it was and live it out the same way because now should we do should we do our best to faithfully do that absolutely but it's not always going to look the same and so we have to really put ourselves in check and how we're living to see how that applies but we had that in 2012 and then we just kind of been sitting outside of comic books there hasn't been another iteration of avatar since 2012. I'm with you. Yeah, we had the comic books, and the comic books are actually good. And if you're a fan, Uncle Iroh invent, invents Boba T. And, yeah, those have been good. Um, the novels have been great as well, but again, not everybody's going to see that medium of it. But when the Netflix series was announced, one of the big sales points of it was that the original creators of Avatar were going to be executive producers and controlling over it. And where I got concerned was when they announced that they were leaving. And the original creators left before the show came out. And as it's quote, and you can see this in the notes if you want to see that, uh, it says, when, and after, after I butcher this name, forgive me, when Konietzo and DiMartino left the live action series, they published an open letter explaining their decision in which DiMartino said they couldn't control the creative uh, narrative of the series. They said they weren't going to, they were pitched that they would be able to control the narrative, and then once they were doing it, they were told no. So they said, we're out. I think they wanted to avoid having another Shyamalan situation. Um, and then they, he goes on to say, when Brian and I signed on the project, we were hired as executive producers and showrunners. In a joint announcement for the series, Netflix said it was committed to honoring the vision for this retelling and had to be supporting us in creating the series. And we expressed how excited we were for the opportunity at, to be at the helm. Unfortunately, things did not go as hoped. And so they departed the series. And honestly, when they departed the series, my first thought was, I, okay, I'm going to caution mode on this uh, because it probably isn't going to be what we expect. And uh, going on, how many of you have seen the live action Netflix series? Okay, only a handful of you. Cool. Um, no, spoilers. no spoilers. I'll say this. I enjoyed it. Um, and there's some minor things that I don't love. But I feel like to put everything in eight episodes of TV for the first season, they didn't do bad. The two things, and I, I don't consider this a spoiler, but yell at me if you think it is. Um, I think I know how it ends. Well, I mean, it, it ends. Yeah, you know the storyline. I don't feel like I, Iroh's inspiring enough. Like, I, they have Iroh a little more pitted in his sadness and loss than I would have enjoyed. Because you don't get the sadness and loss of Iroh till later. You, he's still there. And you actually get a funeral backstory for his son early on. And that's just like, you know, that's, that was a little different. But Aang doesn't waterbend in the first season. Um, he, like, he, Katara keeps trying to get him to waterbend. He just never kind of does it. Past that, it's okay. I enjoyed it. I feel like it was a successful... Uh, I feel like it was a successful attitude. What? Uh, you didn't move fast enough. You live in my house. No excuses. Um, 
I've been telling you for weeks, get on that. Um, but one of the things that uh, net, the Netflix showrunners were so concerned about when, once the creators left is that meant they knew the criticism was, was going to be ramped up. They knew that they were going to be facing that. And uh, just a note with this is that when you intimidate or adapt something well known, you draw more criticism and skepticism. One of the problems is that anytime you label yourself as a Christian, anytime you label yourself as a believer, you are inviting the entire world to look at you and say, all right, how much like Jesus are you? And that's a hard thing to live up to. That's a hard standard to be able to say that, you know, because it's way easier just to be able to say, you know what? I believe God's there. I, I believe there's a God. It's easy to say that because almost anybody can say, I believe God, but the minute you put Jesus' name on it, you automatically draw more. You, you can make a series that's very like Avatar, but the minute you put Avatar's name on it, it has more criticism. It has more restrictions with that. And um, when you compare all three of these things together and add Legend of Korra, it's a hard comparison to look at. But here's something we want us to understand. We're going to jump to scripture with this. If you are a believer, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ in whatever capacity, um, you have an example of what we're called to live out. We have an example of what we're called to do. First Peter 2, verse 21. And um, if, again, if you want scripture, it's up on the slides on the pages. Um, it says, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his six steps. So the first thing it says that Christ took the time to suffer through this life existence that we go through as well to leave us an example. Now, anybody that's making an Avatar adaptation has lots of stuff to work with. You've got the animated series, you've got the books, you've got the comics, you've got stuff to work with. Um, if you're not aware, they're about to make sequel movies to the animated series from the original creator. That's coming. There's going to be new movies that follows the team Avatar as they get older. So we're going to get stuff that goes between Avatar and Korra. And that's going to be coming. The original creators are making that themselves. It's going to be on Netflix and move forward with that. Well, I think it's actually going to theaters. But that's here and we're there. Um, they have stuff to work with. If you're a believer, you have stuff to follow after. One of the hardest problems is when, if you are a believer, if you're trying to follow God but you don't actually see what he leaves you as an example because just having it you can say i want to be godly or i want to follow god but if you don't actually check the source material and you don't follow along with that you're in more of a place to make a bad adaptation how many of you feel like that uh Shyamalan watched all of avatar before he made the movie no strong nose um one of my favorite things that happened in the last year or two uh, Hayden Christensen returned to play uh, Anakin slash Vader in the Ahsoka series and in the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Before he played us on the Ahsoka series, he binged all of Clone Wars and all of Rebels because he knew that someone else had t done more with the character than he had done and he wanted to see what groundwork had been laid. If you're, going to be, if you're going to follow after God, if you're going to follow after Christ, you need to actually check the groundwork of what's been laid out before you and actually see what Scripture teaches you just beyond your opinion. Because listen, if you attend a church, realistically, if you attend a church weekly, you're looking at potentially 52 hours a year of biblical instruction. That's not a lot in comparison to things. You get more than that taking any college course when it comes to actually sitting through things. If you want to have more information, you actually need to delve into it yourself. Um, and you can't follow the example if you haven't actually studied the example. Um, Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 says this, the Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesian church. He says, I follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And Paul says, listen, I follow Jesus, and if you are doing this, you need to follow what he actually set up as well. And one of the hardest parts for the world to, is to look at Christians and see people labeled as Christians that don't live as Christians, or they don't live as Christ-like. Because if you just are living as a denomination, if you're living as a branch, if you're living just as what one church teaches, but you don't actually look like Jesus, 
and you don't actually look like that, then when people look at us, they see the Shyamalan adaptation of Jesus. <laughs> they see that instead of what it's, we're actually called to. They see that, and there's a lot of people out there that look like poor imitations and poor adaptations. How many times do you see people labeled as Christians, and your first thought is like, that's not what Jesus looks like. You see people doing things, and that's not what Jesus looks like. Um, one of my friends who recently passed, her name is Amy. Uh, she's a friend of mine and Ashley's. Um, she was at a Comic-Con in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they were having a Bible discussion panel at the, tr the Comic-Con in Raleigh, and literally outside the window of the Comic-Con in Raleigh was a street preacher telling everyone trying to walk inside that they were going to hell for being there. And literally, there's a room full of people trying to have a conversation to talk about God, and someone standing out on the other side of the window being what they saw as a bad adaptation. You actually need to follow the example, but it says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as this fragrant offering for us. And then just to end this section, just say this. 1 John 2, 6 says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. We're not just called to be associated. We're not just called to be connected. We're not just supposed to and so often, believers can just lump themselves into camps of saying, you know what, I'm this team. You know, how many of you uh, grew up, your parents liked the sports team, so you just went with it because that's what they did? I was a Washington Redskins fan for, like, the first 12 years of my life because that's the jacket my mom got me at Walmart. My mom got me a, a big, you remember the starter jackets with the front pouch in the 80s and 90s, like those like epic moments of fashion? I, huh? Okay, I had, the, I had the Redskins one, and I never saw a game, didn't know a thing about them. That's the team I labeled myself with because that's what was presented to me. And there's so many people. Huh? Packers, yeah. And so often we label ourselves to teams without actually looking at what, it means and what it stands for and those things. Um, and I'm not, first off, I'm not bashing Taylor Swift before I say this. I, I want to preempt my statement. There, you know, you know someone's on Twitter right now. I know, they're coming at me. Um, more Chiefs jerseys were sold this year of Travis Kelsey than his whole career because of Swifties that were supporting Taylor in that capacity. Now, here's the thing. There are people now. Will those can those people be football fans? Absolutely. Am I, is any should the NFL be mad that they were watching it? No. But there's a like they do they represent the things as well? That's that's for someone else to determine. I'm not mad at that. But the reality is, is if we don't actually delve deep and live out what we say we believe. We're messing out. We're messing other people up. Um, and my daughter, my 16-year-old daughter, is a diehard Swifty, and uh, you know she had a Sweet 16 party. It was the era's party, like the whole thing. Um, and I literally remember the day I've watched football since before she was born. Like every Panthers game, watched it consistently. I remember the day she said, "All right, explain to me how this game works." Because once Taylor started showing up at games, my daughter said, all right, tell me how this works. She cared. But here's the thing. A good adaptation can be a way to pivot you to go to that. Now, I'm currently watching the One Piece anime. I'm on like 180 out of 1,800 somewhere in, there, like in, that, in the 1,080s. I've got at least 800 more episodes to go, but listen. The live action coming out as an adaptation kickstarted my family into watching One Piece. When you live out and you live as Christ lived, you can be the reason people actually pursue wanting to know more about God. On the inverse, if you don't, you could be the reason that they could take more time getting there. Netflix's Death Note adaptation. <laughs> You know, I kind of enjoyed it. I, it it's enjoyable, but I'm not saying it's good. Right. Now, sit, listen, Willem Dafoe, 
Uh, and then the and the guy who actually played. I, I thought there was good stuff. But when you live as an adaptation, when you live as an imitation, you can either be the thing that draws people to you, draws people to what you love, or you can be the reason they don't come closer. You can be a hesitation. You can be a stumbling block in that. Um, Philippians 3, 16 through 17 says this. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my examples, brothers and sisters, and just as you have have us as a model keep your eyes on those who live as we do so paul says not only do you need to follow christ you need to keep your eyes on those who are following christ because if you are a believer you need to say all right who is actually going in the right direction you don't need to judge them to say they're not they're not they're not it's not that you need to have who are people that you can actually credibly follow who are people that you can trust to lead you in a right direction and put you in a place of encouragement which brings to this point we have to move from just following an example to actually being an example. And that's the hard part. If you are actually a Christian, if you're actually following Christ, you are modeling what following Christ looks like to somebody, whether you know it or not. Um, there are people who are going to judge if they're going to watch. There are people now who are watching the original animated Avatar series because of the Netflix live action. There are people watching One Piece because of the adaptation. There are people that are watching and reading things because of the stuff that in this capacity, just in the same way there are people watching football because Taylor's watching football. You can be the reason why people do that, um, but you need to live that example. Paul makes this, this statement in 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 2. He says this, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And that's one of the most terrifying verses in scripture to me, to be able to look at somebody and say, hey man, follow me and you'll be following Jesus. Because he says, follow me as I follow Christ. That's scary to me. To say, hey, if you want to know what looking, following Jesus looks like, follow me. You're good. I don't want that. I don't want people to, I don't want to be able to say, if you follow me, you're following Jesus. Because that's scary, but Paul says that. And when we're doing this, that's what he calls to. Verse 2 says, I praise you for remembering me in everything and holding to the traditions just as I passed them on to you. But that's where the struggle comes in. You can set an example, but that doesn't mean the people that follow you are actually going to follow your example. You can set that. Shyamalan didn't follow the example of the people that came before him, but I feel like the Netflix adaptation did do a better job. Are you actually following the people that have set good examples for you, and are you setting examples worth following? 1 Corinthians, uh, 4, 4, 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 16 says, I am writing this to you, not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children, even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have become your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. And Paul says, listen, you've got lots of people you can look at. How many people can you truly follow? Are you living a life that if people truly follow you, they're going to see what true imitation looks like and true adaptation looks like? Can people follow you and see what a genuine relationship with God looks like? Because just because you're labeling yourself as a believer, just because you post believerish things, just because you're here this morning, doesn't make that you're following. I mean, are you living it out in a way that people that are following, they can see that genuine uh, heart and attitude in it? In verse 17, Paul says this, For this reason I have sent you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. He says, listen, I'm going to send you an example in person that you can follow. So one thing I would just challenge you with, one thing I would encourage you is this. Find examples that you find trustworthy. And then in the same token, find in yourself what examples you're going to set for others. And find people who aren't where you are yet that you can intentionally give examples to. Right. Written, I have to create vision, visuals as I read it 
to kind of try and engage with it. So to see an adaptation of Jesus loving an, an autistic adaptation of Matthew, I'm seeing an example of what Jesus, Jesus could very well have loved, you know, loved Matthew, the tax collector. And I can see then an example and the possibility visually of Jesus loving me with autism. Because I don't get that representation in the pulpit, the representation leading church services or leading, leading classes, because the church doesn't know how to do special education very, very well, very safely. So that adaptation has kept me Christian. Because <laughs> I found that I found an example. Yeah. That's powerful. And here, here's something I'm going to say to you, too, and this is just from what I've seen. Very often, you are going to be the example you never had. Um, I'm not saying this to shame my family or anything, but I didn't have a good father figure in my life. And I remember as early as third grade saying, when, I, like, when they would do that, what do you want to be when you grow up things? A good dad. I remember being in third grade, writing on my paper, a good dad with my horrible handwriting. But as early as eight years old, I wanted to be a good dad. That was my heart. And I've done my best to try and be that. And I know I'm not perfect at it either. And with that saying, the stuff that you missed in your faith example, getting to where you are now, there's probably someone out there who desperately needs to see where you've been, what you've gone through, and how you've got to this point. And sometimes you have to be the example you never had in this year life in doing that. On the sake of time, our time is up. Um, but uh, until somebody else is coming in here, we'll take some time to do questions or discussions. Uh, one thing I just want to do tell you is that uh, if you're here, um, come by my booth. You can have a free sticker for being here this morning. Um, you can visit Todd's booth as well. And um, Ashley over at Finger Up Jesus on 709, you can visit us in some of Todd's info is over there, and um, if, if you haven't been in my booth yet, or even if you have, if you're interested, uh, there's over 170 geeky devotionals on my page you can read for free, and also on our podcast channel, it's accessible, and if you want books and you can't buy books, I'll give you books, so just that being said, so is there any questions or discussion before our time is out, out? Yeah, we're, we're going to skip that discussion. <laughs> but I just want, I want to encourage you, wherever you're at in your life, don't feel like you're too far broken or down the wrong road to be an example, because sometimes it can really feel that way. Don't feel like you're too shamed, broken, or stained. Don't feel like you've made too many mistakes. God loves you. God wants you to be closer than you are now, but he's not abandoning you until you get there. So... Uh, keep going, look for good examples, and remember to be a good example because you are going to be an adaptation or an imitation that points people to the, who you actually follow. So, and you can, uh, you can be what encourages people to draw closer to God in those capacities. So, thank you for hanging out this morning. Thank you for starting your con with me, and I hope you have a great rest of your show. Yeah. I would love to. Thank you. And a moment of silence for here and all the people that have come you know what? Fair point. I'm down for that. Um, if you don't, if you're not aware, the creator of Dragon Ball Z passed this week. So we'll take a moment of silence for him, and then we'll pray. Father, I come before you, and we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do, for giving us the chance to look into your word, to gather with others, to be encouraged, to be strengthened. And I ask that you would help us to not walk in our own strength, not walk in our own flesh, but to be in a place where we can see clearly who you are because we're spending time in your word. We're spending time in communication with you in prayer. We're spending time growing with each other. And God, I ask that you would help us to spend this time as we leave here being encouraged and being encouraging to others. Help us to see where we're weak but know that where we're weak, we can be strong in you. Thank you for loving us. Help us to love you and to love others more. In Christ's name, amen.
And if you don't mind, can I take a selfie with everybody real quick? And if you do mind, let me know so I don't ignore you. Okay, cool. All right, I'm just doing it up here because I'm short and I can't get a follow otherwise. All right, wrong way. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, short arms. All right, thank you. Awesome. Three, two, one. Thank y'all. And I'll be at my booth the rest of the day. Love to come talk to you. All right, love you to come talk to me. I can't find you on the floor.